Ophelia, have you found Steph? Demanding voice broke the silence in the room. The moment the man's voice fell, it elicited a chill down her spine. Ophelia, who was leaning over the table, suddenly raised her head to look at him. As she did, sweat rolled down her forehead, along her cheeks, and down her collarbone. It seemed a lot hotter today in New York City. Ophelia lowered her head and did not directly answer her husband's question. Instead, she poured all the items in her bag onto the table. The tall, demanding man walked back and forth with his arms folded across his chest. He urged her again to find the documents they needed. Ophelia's perspiration wasn't just because there was a warm, hot breeze today. This was her husband, Damon Hoffman, who was going to divorce him. Damon hadn't taken his eyes off of his watch since he'd walked into the Civil Affairs Bureau. He grew more anxious when Ophelia failed to find her documents. Ophelia was conditioned to the anger and nagging, so she tuned out Damon's anxious urging as she rummaged through the items on the table. She looked again at her cell phone, her purse, and her passport, but she couldn't find her documents. Maybe I really forgot to bring it with me. As Ophelia stared at the items on the table, her eyes felt sore and tired. She could barely control the tears she'd been feeling for a long time. Watching Ophelia, Damon held his sunglasses in one hand and spoke with suppressed anger in his voice. Ophelia, if you don't want to get a divorce, say so. Don't waste my time. Ophelia stood up and hurriedly stopped him as he turned to leave. Damon and Ophelia had signed a divorce agreement a year ago, but he never had the time, which was why he delayed until today to go through the relevant procedures. I checked a few times before boarding the plane. I'm sure I brought everything with me, but I don't know why I can't find it now. She wasn't in her right mind at the moment, so she didn't want Damon to misunderstand her more. Are you kidding? Damon obviously didn't believe her. Ophelia Hill, though the eldest daughter of the city's top real estate tycoon, wasn't extremely charming, according to Damon. If it weren't for the so-called commercial marriage, he would never marry such an ordinary-looking woman. I didn't mean to, she said. So, how about another appointment? Ophelia hugged her arms and took a step back. As she spoke, she bent down to pick up the things on the table. It seemed that this boring woman didn't want to get a divorce, and still held the position of the importance of being married to the Hoffman family's youngest son. She was simply too shameless. Damon turned around, his face full of anger. It wasn't for the fact this was a public place and he had to maintain his image. He would have reacted aggressively. Ophelia glanced at Damon. She was so tired. It would be better to end this loveless and painful marriage as soon as possible. She had wanted to get it over and leave, but now that was impossible. At the moment, her body wasn't in great condition either. Her knees went weak for some unknown reason. Her body tilted and she knelt on the ground without any warning. Her stomach hit the corner of the table, and the bag in her hand fell to the floor near Damon's feet. After a quick scan of her things, Damon didn't find the necessary documents required for the divorce. He frowned. He knew she must have done this on purpose. Ophelia, after being married for two years finally see what kind of a person you are. You are an extremely hypocritical woman. You are right. Being a part of my family has made you too proud, so you won't give up so easily. Damon laughed gravely. He threw the sunglasses and his hands down in anger, showing his true feelings for her. You have one more day to settle this amicably. Tomorrow, I'm handing it over to my lawyers. I won't waste any more time. This marriage is cut. I am leaving you, he shouted. However, just as Damon was about to leave, he was grabbed by a strong hand and thrown back. Before Damon could react, a red book appeared in front of his eyes, along with other documents. I never thought that the famous Mr. Damon Hoffman would be such a shitty person in private. With a snort of contempt, the documents Damon needed fell right on his face. The bold man unleashed Damon's anger. Who are you? You are, he shouted. He was furious. He had actually been called a bad person. The person who had just grabbed his arm twisted it behind his back before he could react. Get up. I'll give you ten minutes and you'll get a divorce right away. The man was tall and strong with an imposing air. 
The moment the low and intimidating voice came out of his mouth, he didn't give anyone a chance to resist or refute him. Ophelia was frightened when she saw the two men clashing. She rushed forward to separate them. While she did, she picked up what was hers. Damon, stop it! If you won't divorce me, go right now! She bit her lip against the tears in her eyes and pulled Damon aside. In less than ten minutes, the marriage was over. Damon, who held the divorce certificate, glared at the bold man. Just as he was about to get angry again, he left to answer a phone call. Who was this mysterious man? How did he get access to the necessary documents? And why was he helping Ophelia? Ophelia dropped onto the sofa in the office hall after Damon left. Tears welled up in her eyes. She let them fall, not caring what she looked like. After crying for a while, she thought of something. Ophelia stood up from the sofa and realized that the person who gave her the certificate had not left. He was looking at her strangely. He stared at her for a long time, and when he was sure Ophelia was done crying, he walked up to her and handed her a tissue. Ophelia took the tissue and saw two other things at the same time. One was a checkbook. The other was the man's document. You... what are you doing? Ophelia was taken aback. She didn't understand what the man wanted. He didn't speak at all. What was he trying to do? The man smirked. These are my documents and checkbook, he said. I asked the staff just now. There's still an hour before they get off work, so there's still enough time to get us a marriage certificate. What do you mean? she asked. Ophelia's body trembled. She felt like something was wrong. Was there something wrong with this man's head? She was a stranger to him, and yet he wanted to marry her? The man narrowed his eyes, and his smile became even more meaningful. Marry me. Ophelia was dumbfounded. What's going on? Marry him? I had plans to get married recently, the man said with a smile. We both happen to be here today, so let's do it. Are you serious? We don't know each other. Ophelia tightened her grip on reality. Could marriage be so casual in his eyes? Did he just marry anyone he wanted, whenever he wanted? The man had a knowing smile on his face. I think we're just right for that, he said. Rather than following that beast of a boy, why don't you choose me? At least I don't hurt women. No way, Ophelia said as she shook her head. Although her body was confused and uncomfortable right now, her mind was still clear. Are you actually willing to be looked down upon by that man? Don't you want to prove that you're better off without him? Ophelia knew that today's divorce was due to her recklessness two years ago. So today's recklessness couldn't possibly result in anything worse than this, right? The car's air conditioning made her shiver. Cold sweat rolled down her back as she clenched and relaxed her clammy hands. From the moment she got in the car, she had been tense. In her lap was a marriage certificate. Just an hour ago, she had gone from Mrs. Hoffman to Mrs. Woods without a breath. She thought today that her ridiculous two-year marriage would end. She didn't expect that it would lead to an even more unexpected and even more absurd marriage. Mrs. Woods? This new identity left her completely at a loss. How would she adapt? Ophelia frowned, carefully sizing up the man beside her. The man was slender and tall, his healthy skin the color of wheat. His facial features were chiseled and strong, with a sharp jawline. His lips were thin and even, and each time they opened and closed, they revealed a beautiful set of bright white teeth. The fact that he was wearing a handsome, well-tailored suit also clearly showed his status. The man seemed to have noticed Ophelia's gaze, as he suddenly took out a bundle of keys and placed the set in her hand. I'll take you home for... Here's the key. The cold, hard voice was deep and alluring yet it gave off a feeling of authority. Ophelia held the keys in her hand and lowered her head. She felt the weight of the keys in her hand, and the reality of it took her breath away. She took a slow, deep breath and rubbed her temples with her hands, trying to ease her nerves. But when she lifted her head, her eyes met the man's deep blue-gray ones. She was stunned, and only then did she realize that this man named Xavier Woods was the new husband she was married to. What's wrong? She moved her dry lips, her bright eyes unwittingly revealing a trace of fear. I've been talking to you, didn't you hear me? Xavier slightly slowed his talking speed, 
It also slowed down his driving speed. Without hesitation, Ophelia lowered her head and whispered, I'm sorry, I was distracted. The moment she finished speaking, Xavier stopped the car and turned off the ignition. He turned half of his body towards her. His warm breath carried a slight smell of mint, and when it reached her face, she couldn't help but blush. The man gently rested his hand on her forehead. Warmth spread out from the back of his hand through her entire body. The moment it touched her forehead, her nervousness disappeared. Xavier Woods had absurdly entered Ophelia's life. What did he have in store for her? Had he come to cause more chaos than to do any good? Xavier was gentle. His delicate fingers lightly pressed against her forehead. He held it there for a while before he muttered, It doesn't feel like you have a fever. Is it a stomachache? Ophelia couldn't help but flinch. She looked at Xavier warily and said, How did you know I have a stomachache? Xavier revealed a faint smile and started the car to change directions. The moment the car pulled out, Ophelia grabbed his arm. Wait, where are you taking me? Her voice carried a hint of anxiety, fearing that she was going somewhere she didn't want to go. Hospital. Xavier squeezed out the word as the car sped up. However, they hadn't driven far before Ophelia gritted her teeth to stop him. No, I don't want to go to the hospital. When the car stopped, Ophelia's face was deathly pale. She tightly gripped Xavier's sleeve. Didn't you say you were taking me home? Then take me there, please. Xavier stared at her pale face for a long time, as if understanding something. He rubbed his hands together and, ignoring Ophelia's descent, reached over and placed his palm against her stomach. At first, Ophelia was resistant, but when the warmth of his hands made contact, she relaxed. You really won't go to the hospital, Xavier probed. But considering how stubborn she was, he knew that she definitely didn't want to go. He had no choice but to start the car again and head home. As they passed by the convenience store, he stopped and bought a few supplies like a heating pad, ginger ale, and some soothing lavender and peppermint tea. Ophelia nodded weakly. As she inhaled the scent of the tea bag, a warmth spread through her body. Only then was her discomfort slightly relieved. Ophelia couldn't help but blink when she saw his nervous expression. Xavier, what are you trying to do? She asked. Ophelia couldn't stand the awkward, if not slightly tense, atmosphere. From the Civil Affairs Bureau until now, she was practically stupefied. But at the moment, all she wanted to know was Xavier's true thoughts as he sat quietly. Not bad. It only took you two hours to remember my name. It looks like you're warming up to this marriage. Xavier raised his pretty eyebrows and glanced at the watch on his wrist. In the next second, he stretched out his right hand towards Ophelia. Mrs. Woods, I'm so glad to be her husband. As she looked at the right hand that was hanging midair in front of her, Ophelia didn't know if she should hold it or not. The man's hands were slender and his joints were delicate. He didn't look the least bit unusual. Just looking at him probably made people feel delighted. Xavier couldn't help but chuckle when he saw her conflicted expression. There was a bit of ridicule on it. Surprisingly, it was also filled with a bit of love. When Ophelia didn't move, he dropped his hand. There was no dissatisfaction or anger on his face. He simply straightened his body and continued to drive. After about half an hour of driving, they turned into a well-known neighborhood in the city. Ophelia sat quietly as the car drove straight into the district until it stopped at the door of a three-story villa. She finally realized that they had reached home. Xavier opened the car door for her after getting out. You go in first, he said. I'll park the car and then I'll be in. Ophelia stepped out of the car, all while holding the key Xavier had given her. She decided to wait for Xavier to come back. She waited almost ten minutes before she saw him dragging a gray suitcase towards her. Xavier was tall, just over six feet. Facing the scorching sun, his skin faintly revealed the beautiful lust, especially when the corner of his mouth was slightly raised. Ophelia couldn't help but turn her head away, not wanting to be caught gawking at him. What are you waiting for? Xavier saw his newlywed wife standing there foolishly at the door, waiting for him. 
He couldn't help but think of how she didn't even know how to resist when her ex-husband bullied her in the Civil Affairs Bureau. She was soft. He wondered if he'd made the right decision. This is your house. It's impolite for me to go in without permission. Ophelia pursed her lips and returned the key to him. After thinking about it for a while, she said, I think I was too impulsive today. Mr. Woods, you're not busy tomorrow. Can you accompany me to the Civil Affairs Bureau? I want to... She interrupted her. You want to get divorced again? What was going on in Ophelia's mind? Was she going to risk another marriage? Xavier took his keys and stepped around her to open the door. Then he dragged the suitcase behind him as he walked in. He continued to talk to Ophelia while he changed into slippers. It looks like Mrs. Woods has forgotten about something. Tomorrow is Saturday, and the bureau won't be open. Besides, I have to do work tomorrow. Xavier's words left Ophelia powerless to refute him. She could only silently enter the house. Xavier handed over a new pair of men's slippers. Sorry, they're... Haven't been any women in the family. Please, take them. He told the truth, but Ophelia just stood there motionlessly. Xavier hesitated for a second, then picked her up and headed straight to the living room. Ophelia didn't expect this at all. She shouted at him, James, down! Xavier's hand accidentally touched the curve of her waist, which made Ophelia's face turn even redder. She unintentionally struggled a few times, but the pain in her stomach caused her to wince. It hurts? Xavier realized and immediately set her on the sofa. He went to get her some medicine and pour some water. He heard Ophelia's soft whimper of pain from the living room. Her stomach was getting worse. He boiled water for her to make some tea. Just as he placed the kettle on the stove, Ophelia's weak voice reached his ears. Mr. Woods, I haven't asked you. Why did you have my documents? I clearly remember... She trailed off. She clearly remembered that the items were in the bag. But when she arrived at the Civil Affairs Bureau, everything was gone. When Xavier heard her voice, he turned to find the feeble woman leaning against the doorframe as she weakly stared at him. Xavier felt angry and amused at the same time. She was already in so much pain, yet she still had the energy to ask these questions. He could only sigh. Who cried until their stomach hurt on the plane? And who caused the flight attendants to come over and ask again and again if they could help? The passengers around you also got nervous. You finally calmed down, but then you got off the plane and bumped into me. Don't tell me you're going to blame me for picking up your stuff. Thanks to Xavier's reminder, Ophelia suddenly recalled the embarrassing situation on the plane at the airport. Yes, she remembered. Knowing she was about to end her marriage with Damon after two years, she'd been crying on the plane. As a result, she'd made herself sick with worry and stress. She did remember the flight attendants repeatedly asking her if she was all right, providing her with medicine and comforting her. She remembered sitting near a man wearing sunglasses, and when she was feeling her worst, he seemed to be looking at Damon. He also had a concerned expression about her. That man was Xavier. But she'd completely forgotten all of that, because Damon wanted to divorce her. Now that the memories flooded in, she was humiliated. Ophelia's face alternated between humiliated and mortified. Remember? Xavier wanted to tease her. Ophelia's vision went dark and her body swayed. If it wasn't for Xavier's quick reaction, Ophelia's face probably would have hit the floor. Ophelia fell into his arms, half-conscious. Her small body was weak, and she was frighteningly light. The girl who fell into his arms was relentless, even grabbing onto his clothes to question him. What does that have to do with you marrying me? Why did you marry me? Why did he marry her? She really wanted to know. Why? Should he tell her because he coincidentally saw the divorce agreement between Ophelia and Damon within the pile of documents? Or because that man was from the Hoffman family? Or because he just so happened to have his own documents with him? Ophelia would never believe the excuses. Xavier tilted his head and thought for a moment, before choosing a rather good answer. Maybe it's because I like you. When he finished speaking, he realized that the girl in his arms had already fainted. He touched Ophelia's forehead, picked her up, and rushed out the door. 
he got her in the car and headed straight for the hospital. Once they arrived, Xavier rushed into the hospital with Ophelia in his arms. It wasn't often they saw a man wearing such fine clothes rushing through the hospital with a woman in his arms. Xavier finally found the emergency room. Ophelia seemed to have woken up before he'd found help. Ophelia frowned and groaned in pain. Her pale face was covered in a cold sweat, and it took her a long time to open her eyes to ask, You... where are you taking me? Hospital. Xavier didn't elaborate as he stopped the doctor. The doctor was an emergency physician, and after a quick examination and seeing Ophelia's reaction, he made his judgment. This could very well be acute appendicitis. We may need to operate. The doctor's words made Xavier flustered. With the help of the nurse, he sent Ophelia to be assessed. Only then did he feel slightly relieved. The emergency doctors confirmed that it was appendicitis and rushed her to the operating room. The operation didn't take long. After a while, Ophelia was pushed out on a gurney. She was sleeping soundly. Xavier was truly her knight in shining armor. Will Ophelia ever truly accept him as her husband? As Ophelia laid in her hospital bed, Xavier found that she actually had a lovely, delicate face. A nurse found Xavier in the waiting room and brought him to Ophelia's private room. The main surgeon gave him a few post-op instructions before leaving. Ophelia was like a frightened kitten lying on the bed. Her body was buried under the quilt, only exposing her small face. The soft sound of her breathing reached his ears, giving him a strange feeling of comfort. He couldn't help but raise his hand to brush away the strand of hair stuck on her forehead. Xavier couldn't help but smile. As he did, a nurse pushed open the half-closed door and walked in. Xavier noticed that she was holding a bedpan. The patient can get out of bed and walk 24 hours after surgery if she's feeling up to it. But don't give her anything to eat for a day or two. Wait until she's had a bowel movement. By the way, if she doesn't do so soon, you have to help her move around. She should be able to eat some normal food soon. The nurse left the bedpan in his hand after giving the instructions. Xavier looked at the bedpan after he set it down and then looked at Ophelia on the bed, realizing that she'd woken up. Without waiting for Xavier to speak, to avoid any awkwardness, Ophelia immediately said, I heard what the nurse said. Good, Xavier replied softly. He walked to her bedside and was going to ask her how she felt. Before he could, she interrupted him. Can you hand me my phone? Go into my phone's contact list to Jane Stewart and press call for me, please, Ophelia softly requested. Although the anesthetic hadn't worn off entirely, she could still feel some pain, but that was nothing to her. What really gave her a stomach ache was the nurse's words. How could she not feel awkward? You want to find a friend to take care of you? Xavier saw through her little trick, so he didn't listen to her. He bent down slightly and touched her ice-cold cheek. I'm your husband. Taking care of you is what I signed up for. But Ophelia bit her lower lip, looking like she was about to cry. She was already in a sorry state today. First, she was forced to divorce her husband. Then she impulsively married a man she didn't even know. But now this strange man was looking after her like this. So how could she find the energy to resist him? Maybe this man wasn't helping her at all. Maybe he was trying to make a joke out of her. Enough. She'd had enough of being the laughingstock of others. She was a laughingstock in her parents' home and a laughingstock in her husband's house. Would everyone find comfort in her humiliation? As her mind raced, Ophelia couldn't help but cry. Mr. Woods, she shouted, I'm begging you. Don't make things difficult for me, okay? You can leave now. Don't bother me anymore. I don't want to... Ophelia's crying only lasted for about ten seconds. Tears flowed from her eyes, but her mouth was met by Xavier's. All her grievances were instantly erased by the man's kiss. Ophelia looked at his face just inches from hers and had an indescribable feeling in her heart. Her eyes widened in horror, but she closed them again as she felt his warm mouth against hers. Xavier gently caressed her face and then pressed her into his arms, as if he wanted to absorb her into his body. Ophelia gradually lost herself in Xavier's gentle kiss. After a long time, Xavier finally let go of her. He couldn't help but laugh at her tears same face. Still crying? Xavier raised his hand to wipe away the tears at the corners of her eyes. When his eyes fell to her mouth again, he couldn't help but swallow audibly.
Kissing his new wife wasn't a big boo feeling. Don't cry. The nurse will think I'm mean. Xavier said softly. But in his heart, he was mocking himself for losing the self-control he was once so proud of. Ophelia choked on her sobs. She pushed her face into the uncomfortable hospital blanket. Xavier leaned over and kissed her on the forehead. Have a good rest, he said. I'm going downstairs to buy some things. Stay with you tonight and take good care of you while you're stuck here. The distressed damsel had at last found her charming prince. Would they both eventually fall in love with one another? Only time would tell. Xavier headed downstairs to buy some things, but only after he got to the hospital shop and looked around did he realize the problem. He had no idea what to buy. After wandering aimlessly for a while, he finally spotted a man who looked similar to him. In the end, feeling very proud of himself, Xavier brought some of the same things as the other man. After sitting down to work for about half an hour, Xavier carried his bags back to his wife's room. Ophelia was fully awake. She had to lie on her back for eight hours after the operation, so she could do nothing but lay down. She was nervous as soon as Xavier pushed open the door and walked into the room. The kiss they'd shared was completely unexpected. Even now, she could still feel the taste of him lingering in her mouth. Her face turned red at the thought of it. Hungry? Xavier asked as soon as he entered the room. But after he said it, he took it back. I forgot, he said. The nurse said you can't eat yet. Right. Ophelia nodded her head awkwardly. Xavier knew she was shy, so he didn't force her to chat with him. Instead, he took out everything he'd bought and started to organize things while he talked to her. This is the first time I've stayed with someone in the hospital, so I don't really know what I'm doing. I bought some toiletries, a pair of pajamas, warm socks, and some other things. If there's anything else that would help you, I'll buy it. Xavier showed Ophelia what he bought like it was a treasure. When she'd seen the first two bags in his hand, Ophelia's face turned red. Why did you buy this? Ophelia's bright eyes stared at the teddy bear in Xavier's hand. Xavier blinked as he tried to understand what she meant. Ophelia cleared her throat. Mm, um, this isn't for children. Xavier looked at the item in her hand for a moment, before he realized that he'd bought it because the other man in the shop had also bought one. After Ophelia finished listening to his story, she burst into laughter. Before Xavier could react, she was blushing. Then she whispered to Xavier, Thank you. Xavier hugged his arms and sat on the side of her bed. Isn't saying thank you between husband and wife a bit too foreign? He asked. Mr. Woods. Ophelia's voice suddenly became a little louder. She interrupted him. There's something I have to tell you, honestly. I must have been in a daze when I agreed to marry you. If we can, we should get a divorce as soon as possible. To tell the truth, I just met you. This is absurd. I don't even know who you are. Ophelia was a bit agitated. When she said the word absurd, she'd almost sat up on the bed. Xavier pressed her back down. Is it so absurd to marry me? Xavier looked down at her condescendingly. The smile on his face vanished, and an abnormally cold expression replaced it. Ophelia was slightly shocked by his expression. Ridiculous. How could it not be absurd? She'd known Damon since childhood. This relationship would be foolish in Damon's eyes, too. Not to mention the fact that she merely knew the man in front of her. You're not thinking about your husband, are you? Xavier raised his eyebrows and guessed Ophelia's inner thoughts. A man who could make her cry until her stomach ached, and who made her break down on the plane, was not someone worth thinking about. I'm not thinking about him. I just don't want to experience that kind of nonsense again in the future. Ophelia closed her eyes as if resigned to her fate, and spoke the words in her heart. Marrying him was a mistake, so I have nothing to say. Mr. Woods, you're kind. I don't want you to be stuck with regrets about marrying me. Xavier was shocked as he stared at the pale and unusually quiet girl on the bed. He thought that Ophelia's rejection was because she was thinking about that vile man. He didn't expect her to be worried she would be doing him wrong by marrying him. Oh, silly woman. I don't feel any regret. Do you? Xavier quietly sat on the bed and held her face in his hands as he continued. Ophelia, I think I'm far more suited to you. 
Why not give it a try? Or do you think that's what your life should be like? Ophelia opened her eyes to look at him while her tears fell. He could change his mind at any moment. Yet, she felt an inexplicable sense of trust in him. After a while, Ophelia finally squeezed out a few words from her pale lips. You really don't regret? No regrets. Xavier smiled. Ophelia's mood improved. Xavier kissed her on the cheek, then looked at his watch and said, Lie down for a while. I'm going to take a shower. Xavier stood up. Ophelia noticed that he was sweating profusely. His shirt, which had originally been unpleated, was now almost completely soaked through with sweat. It clung to his body, but it only accentuated his toned figure. Okay. Ophelia nodded and watched him take his toiletries into the bathroom. As she got comfortable, she took out her phone from under her pillow. Finally, Ophelia started to accept Xavier as her true husband. But will fate stop this happy beginning in its tracks? Ophelia heard water splashing from the bathroom. There might have been a door between them, but Ophelia's heartbeat quickened when she heard the sound anyways. While Xavier took a shower, she typed out a text to Jane. She'd planned to have Jane bring her a few sets of fresh clothes, but when she thought about it, if Jane came here, she would run into Xavier. Then it would be impossible to hide any of this marriage drama from her best friend. After thinking it over, she gave up. Damon had told her that she couldn't tell anyone about their divorce. Ophelia had no choice but to delete the text and put her phone away. The moment she tucked it away, Xavier walked out of the bathroom. Ophelia certainly hadn't expected Xavier to come out with just a white towel wrapped loosely around his lower body. His taut waist didn't have a single ounce of fat, and his abs carved a beautiful V between his hips. Ophelia was at a loss as she watched Xavier walk toward her. Xavier shook out his wet hair and stared at her. Only then did he mutter, are you not feeling well? Why are you so flushed? Ophelia came to her senses and immediately closed her eyes. Didn't you buy pajamas? She asked. Why didn't you change? I remembered to buy them for you, but I forgot my own. Xavier answered matter-of-factly. In the next second, he reached out his hand toward Ophelia and said, Open your eyes. I'm your man. What's there to be embarrassed about? Xavier forced her to open her eyes, but her face still heated as she looked at his bare upper body. Ever since she'd met this man, she was always blushing for no reason. How many times had she blushed a day? Ophelia looked up at the ceiling and wondered. What she didn't expect was that the man's next words would confuse her even further. Where am I going to sleep tonight? Xavier looked around the room with a serious expression. Although this was a VIP room, there was only one bed. The only other option was a folding chair. Aren't you going home tonight? She asked. Ophelia thought that he would leave. Didn't I say that I would stay with you? A trace of craftiness flashed across Xavier's eyes when he said that. Ophelia was panicking. She couldn't possibly ask Xavier to get another room, right? She thought for a moment, then suddenly thought of something. As she was about to take out her phone to ask for help, Xavier lifted her blanket. What are you doing? Ophelia's hair stood on end like a frightened cat. Xavier just climbed into the bed and leaned toward her naturally. I'm staying with you. Xavier squinted his eyes. He said it matter-of-factly and let out a playful laugh. Mr. Wood, you really... She drifted off. Ophelia didn't know what words to use to describe the man beside her. Was this kindness or what? She admitted that she was grateful to him for standing up for her in the Civil Affairs Bureau when Damon humiliated her. But she hadn't even thought seriously about having anything to do with this man, let alone such a close relationship. This wasn't what she'd planned for. But this man was like a wild weed growing in the water, entangling her heart completely. Ophelia closed her eyes, hoping against all hope that maybe this didn't have to end badly. What are you thinking about? Xavier's voice reached her. When she glanced back, she met his pretty blue-gray eyes, gazing at her without a care in the world. At first glance, 
His eyes looked like they belonged to a curious cat. Their shade of blue gave people a deep feeling of serenity. Ophelia was a little dazed. After a moment, she finally said, Mr. Woods, are you multiracial? Yes, my father was American and my mother was Scottish and British. Xavier nodded and subconsciously moved closer to Ophelia. Do you really want to know me? No wonder your eyes are so beautiful, Ophelia whispered. She thoughtfully nodded her head. She was about to say something else when she felt a warmth on her shoulder. Xavier had gotten even closer to her. He was staring at her face with eyes full of emotion. He looked at her face for a long time before he smiled and murmured, Ophelia, you're beautiful. What are you talking about? She exclaimed. It was the first time that Ophelia had ever been told such a thing. She thought that her looks were average. The natural beauty was her sister. Really? Xavier praised her without hiding hesitation. Your eyebrows are even and thick. Naturally perfect. Your nose is so cute and delicate. And your lips, they're pink and soft. It really makes me want to. He trailed off, then lowered his head and kissed her on the lips. The tip of his tongue pried open her closed mouth and tangled with her own. She kissed Xavier for a while. He quickly moved away and let go of her. His voice was also a little hoarse. It's getting late. You should get some sleep. I'll watch over you. Xavier got off the bed and tucked her in. Just as he was about to leave, Ophelia grabbed his wrist and spoke. Sleep here. With me. Xavier looked at Ophelia. This woman was naive. Wasn't she worried that he wouldn't be able to hold back? The next morning, the nurse came to inspect the room and brought Ophelia's medicine. She entered the room to see a heartwarming scene. The two of them slept in each other's embrace. Tranquility was enviable. Since the couple had arrived, she could feel the man's love and care for his wife. There were few men who were like that these days. It was truly a miracle. The nurse paused, then quietly left the room. The moment the door was closed, Xavier opened his eyes. He'd been awake since the nurse had opened the door. Xavier lowered his head and looked at the woman in his arms. His blue eyes were filled with warmth as the corner of his mouth raised. This was the most comfortable night of sleep he'd had in years. Was it because of her? Ophelia subconsciously sunk into Xavier's embrace, her hand pressing firmly against his chest. The smile on Xavier's face deepened. He adjusted his movement slightly to make Ophelia more comfortable. While he looked at her sleeping face, Xavier's eyes were filled with a gentleness that very rarely appeared. He couldn't help but be moved. He lowered his head and left a kiss on Ophelia's forehead. Thinking back to last night, when she said they could squeeze together in bed, that conflicted and shy expression of hers was truly unforgettable, even to the point of being cute. Why couldn't Damon see such beauty? It was fine, because his failure to see Ophelia's heart gave Xavier the opportunity to see it all. His bluish-gray eyes instantly turned from gentle to sharp. That sharpness disappeared as his phone rang. Ophelia's brows twitched when she heard the ringtone. Xavier reached for the phone on the table. He glanced at Ophelia and picked the phone up. Hello? Xavier said. It seemed like the caller paused for a moment after hearing the man's voice. And you are? Where's Ophelia? She's still asleep, Xavier answered. You're Damon? The woman on the phone said. Xavier furrowed his eyebrows in dissatisfaction. Just as he was about to speak, the other party beat him to it. No, you're not Damon. Damon's still on the live broadcast. Who the hell are you? You're Jane? Xavier asked. Yes. Jane answered. You know me? I'm Ophelia's husband, he said. An hour later, Jane arrived at the hospital, worn out from the journey. As soon as she entered the room, she rushed to Ophelia. She grabbed her hands and asked, Ophelia, are you all right? Ophelia blinked in surprise. Jane, why are you here? She asked. How did Jane know she was in the hospital? What was going on? Did she already hear about the divorce? Countless guesses ran through her mind. Once she confirmed that Ophelia was all right, Jane's gaze swept across the room. Jane, what are you looking at? Ophelia saw the worry on Jane's face. Jane looked back at Ophelia with a serious expression. What's this about a man calling himself your husband? 
Ophelia was completely stunned. Jean, you... She stuttered. Miss Jane, are you looking for me? Xavier came out of the bathroom. He'd already changed his clothes. Ophelia looked at Xavier, who was wearing a handsome suit. She might have even been checking him out. He really was handsome, more so than Damon. He exuded a noble aura, and the way he looked at her was always warm. His blue-gray eyes seemed to possess some sort of magic. Jane stood up. She looked at Ophelia, then at the tall, handsome man who had suddenly appeared. The two of them were married? Her mind raced. They looked at each other as if they were in a world of their own. No one else existed. But what was going on? What happened in the past 24 hours? Jane guiltily interrupted them. She coughed a few times and stared at Ophelia. What exactly is going on? She couldn't help to ask. Ophelia blushed. Jane, I... Ophelia didn't know where to start. She hadn't quite recovered from the reality yet. Xavier walked to Ophelia's side and touched her forehead lightly. You guys take your time. I have to take care of something, so I'm going out. Where are you going? Ophelia asked. There was a feeling in her heart that threw her back into the place she feared most. Xavier smiled. Don't worry. I'm just going to a quick meeting. I'll be back later. Ophelia looked at Xavier and nodded nervously. Will Jane provide a hand in keeping Ophelia's new life secret? Could Ophelia trust Jane when it comes to her relationship with Xavier? After Xavier left, Ophelia's gaze was still fixed on the doorway he'd walked through. It was the first time that Jane had seen Ophelia like this. Why so secretive? She probed. Ophelia froze, pointed at herself, and asked, Me? Jane nodded. What's going on between you and him? This guy. You have a secret boyfriend. You know anything at all. No, that, that's not right. Have you completely divorced Damon? Ophelia's heart tightened as a sense of guilt arose. Jane was right. What had happened to her? She'd only known Xavier for 24 hours, but it felt like they'd known each other for years. She even found herself looking forward to living with him in the future. Was it because of his gentleness and consideration last night that she had completely fallen into the trap? Ophelia was in a daze, so Jane reached out to shake her hand. Oh, what are you daydreaming for? Damon and I are already divorced. Ophelia lowered her head and said, Just yesterday, it took less than ten minutes. It happened really fast. Jane was stunned. You and Damon got divorced? He doesn't love me at all. We only got married because of family interests. Ophelia pondered her marriage over the past two years. Actually, she was never happy at all. She was just a bargaining chip. In order to appease the Hill family, she had to marry out. In her in-law's home, she led a lowly life. Since she didn't have a good enough relationship with Damon, almost everyone in the family gave her a hard time. Her life was even worse than the Hoffman family servants. But over the past two years, she had endured it all, constantly telling herself she had to be strong. Jane frowned when she saw the sadness and loneliness in Ophelia's eyes. She could understand her feelings. Her marriage was in danger too, but she didn't want others to see her differently. So she had always taken comfort in her determination to persevere. So maybe the decision was correct, Jane answered softly. Ophelia lowered her eyes and spoke. Actually, Damon and I signed a divorce agreement a year ago. It's just that he never had the time. That's why he delayed until yesterday to go through the relevant procedures. I really never thought that you and Damon would go through with a divorce. Jane was somewhat regretful. She knew that Ophelia and Damon grew up together and were childhood friends. So she assumed they would get along pretty well. But the result seemed to be the opposite. Ophelia sighed. When we married, it wasn't his choice either. He always said I was a boring woman. He felt disgusted just by looking at me. Jane grew more and more upset. She held Ophelia's hand tightly. Oh, I think you deserve a better person, she said. Ophelia thought of what Xavier had said to her yesterday. Could he really be the right person for her? Speaking of which, Jane said, what happened between you and that man? Ophelia blushed. But then she told Jane everything about yesterday. After listening to Ophelia explain the entire process, 
Jane was in complete disbelief. After a long while, Jane finally spoke. So you got married to Xavier on a whim? Yes, Ophelia nodded. Girl, you're playing with fire. Jane frowned. She didn't seem to think much of Ophelia and Xavier. A man she'd never met before wanted to marry her just like that? <laughs> Child's play. Or was it because he had some hidden motive? Jane was worried that Ophelia would have to go through another failed marriage. Ophelia was about to open her mouth to speak when she saw a figure standing at the door. She was stunned. Didn't he leave? Why was he back? Xavier looked at Ophelia's dazed expression and let out a faint smile. What? I only just left and you already don't recognize me? Jane's heart trembled when she heard Xavier's voice. When did he come back? Had he heard what she just said? Xavier walked in with a bag of stuff and gently put it on the table. I went to buy you breakfast. If you're feeling okay, then you can have some, Xavier said. Ophelia nodded. Thanks. Miss Jane, if you have time, please take care of Ophelia for me, Xavier implored. Jane wasn't sure how to respond to Xavier, so she just looked at him. Xavier looked at Jane and said, I'm running late. Take care of yourself. Mm-hmm, go ahead, Ophelia said lightly. Work is more important. When Jane saw Xavier walk out the door, she couldn't help but feel relieved. On the other hand, Jane wondered if Xavier had a hidden motive behind marrying Ophelia. However, before Jane could speak, Xavier stopped at the door and said, Miss Jane, there is no way to be certain in this world without experience. Right? What was Xavier implying? Did he want to give Ophelia an experience of a lifetime? The news anchor was talking about Damon and her sister. Ophelia looked unblinkingly at the pictures on the news. The photo they were showing focused on Damon and Emily Hill's smiling faces. Emily held Damon's arm intimately, and her face showed a blissful smile. Ophelia couldn't understand what their smiles meant. She had never seen Damon smile like that before. She clenched her hands tightly as she listened to the news. It seemed like they were secretly photographed by paparazzi while they were out eating. Ophelia hadn't forgotten one thing. Damon, aside from being the vice president of the Hoffman family's business, also possessed the graceful Hoffman family charm. With such an identity, countless women would rush to meet him, so there were constant rumors about him. With each accusation, they used the influence of the Hoffman clan or the fact that he was married to suppress those rumors. Ophelia had gotten used to these things over the past two years, but this time, she never would have thought that the target of the rumors would be her own sister. Suddenly, Ophelia remembered something. Last month, when Emily came to visit, she'd said something that Ophelia didn't quite understand. But now, Ophelia understood everything. Sister, you and Damon won't last. Damon seems to have a woman hidden in his heart. Just divorce him quickly. That way you won't be hurt when the press airs everything out. Ophelia could remember the expression on her sister's face. It wasn't a taunt, but determination. So Emily was the woman that Damon loved. Xavier looked at Ophelia's face and glanced at the screen. He picked up the remote and turned off the TV. He admitted that he felt uncomfortable. What, still thinking about your ex-husband? Ophelia heard Xavier's words and turned around to look at him. She could tell that Xavier was angry because he'd emphasized the word ex-husband. You're angry? Ophelia's voice was soft but slightly judgmental. Xavier retracted his gaze, picked up his food, and took a bite. Ophelia was at a loss as to how to deal with the situation. I didn't mean it that way. Then what did you mean? Xavier answered. I'm sorry. Ophelia only thought to apologize. Xavier put down his chopsticks. Why are you sorry? Did that upset you? After all, he was still your husband. Ophelia felt an indescribable pain in her heart when she heard Xavier's words. It seemed like he was truly angry. They say that a woman's heart is as deep as the sea, but the thoughts of a man are even more difficult to guess. Damon had been like this, and now even Xavier was the same. Looking at Ophelia's sad face, even if Xavier was angry inside, he couldn't bear to say it to her. Let's eat, Xavier said flatly. I don't think I know how to get along with men. 
Ophelia's voice was as soft as a mosquito's buzz, but Xavier heard her. He looked at the despondent Ophelia and sighed. What kind of life did this quiet woman have for the past two years? He had the urge to understand it. Ophelia, I'm not like Damon. Do you understand? Ophelia stared at Xavier blankly. Warmth swelled up in her heart. All right, I understand, she said. At last, Xavier seemed somewhat comforted as Ophelia picked up the chopsticks again. Ophelia's voice rang again when she raised her chopsticks. I wasn't thinking about Damon just now. The explanation made him feel much better. Xavier nodded. Eat your food. He didn't want to keep talking about Damon. After dinner, Xavier helped Ophelia outside. It's lovely out tonight. Ophelia looked at the stars in the night sky. Xavier looked up and said, Do you know where the stars are the most beautiful? No, I don't, she said. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Ophelia smiled. I'll show you the next time we have the chance. Xavier helped Ophelia to sit down. She looked up at the night sky. Recently, it's been popular for couples to go to Finland to see the Aurora Borealis. They say that couples who see it will always be together. Xavier smirked. The TV shows these days are really doing quite well. Whether it's true or false, it's a dream. Ophelia smiled as her eyes flashed. Xavier noticed Ophelia's gaze and his heart skipped a beat. Her eyes were truly beautiful, full of unspoken thoughts. The two of them snuggled down on the bench. Tired? he asked. Not tired, Ophelia replied. If you are tired, we'll go back, Xavier suggested. Ophelia didn't want to go back to her hospital bed so soon. She didn't really like the smell of the medicine in the corridor. Let's stay a bit longer, she whispered. Unfortunately, a ringtone interrupted the moment. Ophelia looked at the caller ID and frowned. Who was the caller, and why was Ophelia hesitant to take the call? It was Damon. Xavier also saw the caller ID flashing. You don't want to answer? He asked. Ophelia looked at Xavier, secretly expecting him to say something different. Xavier reached for Ophelia's phone and cut off the call, helping her make the decision. If you don't want to, then don't. It's not a big deal. Ophelia's heart softened. He always seemed to be able to see through her thoughts, and she had a sense of security around him that she'd never felt before. You no longer have anything to do with Damon. Xavier's tone carried a sense of confidence and calmness. Ophelia looked at him steadily for a moment before nodding her head. Yes, she and Damon were no longer connected. Actually, she understood why Damon called her. But she was tired of living like this. Although the matter of her divorce from Damon couldn't be revealed yet, she didn't want to deal with the Hoffman family anymore. Ophelia gently put her tired head on Xavier's shoulder. Mr. Woods, is it okay for me to do this? She asked timidly. Of course. Xavier pulled Ophelia into his arms. And I'll cover for you in the future if anything happens, he said. Ophelia nodded. She closed her eyes and said softly, I think I'm really tired. If you're tired, let's go back and rest. Xavier's voice was soft. Okay. This time, Ophelia didn't object. Without saying another word, Xavier picked up and carried Ophelia as if she weighed nothing. Ophelia stared at Xavier until her neck felt sore. She leaned her head against Xavier's shoulder and hugged his neck tightly. He felt Ophelia's reliance on him, and for some reason, the depression weighing on Xavier's heart finally disappeared. The two of them slept in the hospital bed through the entire night. Can I leave the hospital tomorrow? Ophelia asked in a daze before she went to bed. Xavier hugged Ophelia and nodded. Then, without saying anything further, he closed his eyes and fell asleep. When Ophelia awoke, Xavier was no longer there. She rubbed her eyes and checked her cell phone. It was already eight in the morning. Ophelia had just gotten off the bed when the nurse walked in. Mrs. Woods, you're awake. Ophelia still wasn't used to being addressed like that. She gave the nurse a small nod. Mr. Woods went to buy breakfast for you, the nurse continued. He's a kind husband. You're very lucky. Ophelia felt her heart swell at the praise for her husband. Oh, and Mr. Woods has already completed the discharge procedure. In a while, you two can go home, the nurse informed. 
When Ophelia heard that they could leave the hospital, she was overjoyed. Really? She asked. Yes. The nurse then left. When Xavier came back with breakfast, Ophelia had already changed her clothes. Xavier put down the food and said with a smile, Are you that impatient to go home? Yes. Ophelia nodded. If it had been just a few days earlier, she would have refused to be hospitalized altogether. Now that she had him, her resistance was a little less intense. Xavier pulled on Ophelia's hand and sat down. Let's eat breakfast first, he urged her. After breakfast, Xavier brought Ophelia back to the villa. This time, Ophelia finally got a clear look at the situation at home. It seemed as though Xavier rarely stayed here. Ophelia thought to herself that she should really redecorate this house. Ophelia! Xavier's voice sounded. She turned around to see Xavier carrying his luggage down the stairs, looking like he was about to leave. Where are you going? She asked. I'm going on a business trip. Are you going to be okay alone? Xavier answered. Ophelia remembered that Xavier seemed to be in the upper echelons of some multinational company. He seemed to be busy with work every day. There was an indescribable melancholy in her heart at the thought of him leaving. Xavier put down his luggage and reached Ophelia in a few steps. He put his hand on her shoulder and said, I'll be back in three days. I won't be long. Ophelia nodded. Okay, travel safe, she said quietly. Don't worry, Xavier nodded. You haven't fully recovered yet. Just rest more while I'm gone. Call me any time if you need anything. Ophelia forced a smile. Okay, but you're at work. Can you talk? She asked. I won't miss your calls. That's a promise, Xavier said to Ophelia. Ophelia felt a little reluctant, but she had to let Xavier go. All right. Xavier bent over and kissed Ophelia on her forehead and whispered, Wait for me to come back. After sending Xavier off, Ophelia returned to her room. Standing in the empty living room, Ophelia was thinking about how to rearrange the house when her phone rang. A familiar number. Ophelia took a deep breath. It wasn't a good kind. Hey, she answered. Sis, Dad wants you home tomorrow. The call was from her sister, Emily. I know, Ophelia said flatly. One last thing. You'd better be mentally prepared when you come back. Ophelia could hear the vindictive smile in Emily's voice right before she hung up the phone. What was cooking in Emily's mind? What did she have in store for Ophelia? Ophelia stood at the front door of the Hill family villa. She had complex feelings towards this house. Since her mother's death, she'd had no place in the family at all. Her dad was always busy at work, and he'd never cared about her anyways. Her stepmother didn't know any better. Everything had changed since Ruth Walters walked into this house. Ruth was a two-faced woman with power. She was good to her father and liked to wear her hypocritical mask to win the hearts of others. But it was a different story for Ophelia. As for her half-sister, Emily was usually relatively kind to her. Ophelia sighed softly. She'd been away from home since college. Two years ago, she was called back home to be married to Damon. He was likely the reason she was called back again today. I'll dismiss your back, a female voice sounded. Ophelia turned her head to see the maid, Mrs. Smith, turning from her grocery shopping. Mrs. Smith walked by Ophelia with a puzzled look on her face. Why don't you come in? Ophelia followed Mrs. Smith into the house. Miss, are you right? Mrs. Smith inquired. Ophelia shook her head. She was trying her best to give herself a psychological boost. It gave her a headache to imagine the situation she was about to face. After a deep, unconvincing breath, Ophelia walked in. Sitting in the living room were her father, sister, Ruth, and Damon. Upon Ophelia's arrival, everyone's expression changed. Ophelia greeted her father. Dad. She also said hello to Ruth. Auntie. Richard Hill nodded. Ruth hurried forward and pulled Ophelia along with her. You're black! Hurry up and sit down. Everyone has been waiting for you. Ruth was holding Ophelia's hand tightly, as if in warning. Although she was unenthused, Emily still greeted her older sister. Damon raised his head and looked at Ophelia coldly. Although Ruth was uninvolved in the situation, she still pulled Ophelia over to Damon's side and sat down. Richard looked at his daughter, who looked a bit pale, and finally opened his mouth. Uncomfortable? 
My stomach isn't feeling well, Ophelia whispered. After Damon heard that, he turned his head to the side to express his concern. Are you all right? Ophelia nodded. Much better. This kind of drama had conspired many times over the past two years. She didn't know why she was particularly nauseous over it today. Damon squinted at Ophelia's attitude. It seemed like she finally understood how to bite back. Emily saw Damon's gaze on Ophelia. She held her hands tightly and bit her lip. She'd obviously wanted to sit back and wait for Ophelia's show, but now there was nothing. They had been waiting for so long, and it was finally time for them to get divorced. Emily couldn't let all her efforts go to waste. No matter what, Damon would be hers. She wanted Damon all for herself. Just as she was about to open her mouth, Ruth grabbed Emily's hand, using her eyes to signal her not to be too nosy. Emily was confused. What's going on today? Everyone was acting strange. Sister, if you're not feeling well, tell us, Emily said. She couldn't expose herself by revealing the true reason for her concern. Ophelia glanced at Emily as she thought to herself how good of an actress her little half-sister had become. Richard Hill also noticed that his daughter was a little different today, and said, What happened to you? I'm fine. Ophelia could no longer sit down. She just wanted to leave. Ophelia turned and looked at Damon's despicable face. Damon and Emily explained it all. They just happened to bump into each other at the restaurant. They didn't know that they would be targeted by reporters. The news just randomly ran with them, Richard explained. So don't think too much about it. Ophelia answered, Dad, if there's nothing else, I'd like to leave. I have a trip report to sort out. Richard was stunned for a moment. His daughter was being slightly rude. He's still satisfied. At least her heart was with the company. Let's eat before you leave. Then I'll have the driver take you back to the company. Richard asked. He knew that Hillcrest Realty success owed some credit to Ophelia. Damon stood up and said, I was just on my way there. I'll take you to work. Richard Hill nodded in satisfaction. All right, your husband and wife, no need for my interference. Got it, Damon answered. Outside, Ophelia glanced at Damon and said, I'll be leaving first. Damon put on his sunglasses. Ophelia, are you angry with me? Ophelia didn't want to explain herself to Damon, so she remained silent. Well, let me tell you, you'd better keep your mouth shut. Damon smiled mockingly. If the parents found out about our divorce, the Hill family's good days would be over. Ophelia clenched her fists tightly as she watched Damon walk away confidently. How was Ophelia going to keep such a huge secret from her family? What would happen once the truth was out? It was high noon as Ophelia walked under the harsh sun. Her clothes had become sticky with sweat. A few strands of her hair stuck to her face. She was in such a hurry to get out that she forgot to bring her umbrella with her to help battle the blazing sun. Ophelia still hadn't fully recovered from her surgery, so she felt dizzy. When she finally left the residential complex, Ophelia held onto the wall to rest before walking any further. She closed her eyes and leaned against the wall. Her face was as white as paper, and her lips were bloodless. She was even gasping for air. Not far from Ophelia, there was a car park. When the driver saw her, he took out his cell phone and made a call. Ophelia stood against the wall for a while before her cell phone rang. She opened her eyes and took out her phone with some difficulty. When she saw the caller ID, Ophelia's eyes lit up. Mr. Woods was calling. Hey. She answered as calmly as possible. You're not at home? Xavier asked directly. Ophelia's eyes flashed. She gripped her cell phone tightly, not knowing how to respond. In Ophelia's silence, Xavier said helplessly, Ophelia, are you listening? Yes, Ophelia quickly answered. I'm listening. Xavier paused for a moment. I'm here. You can talk to me. Ophelia didn't expect her heart to beat faster when she heard such a simple and ordinary sentence. This was something she'd never had before. She looked up at the sky. Hmm. Her tone grew cheerful, as if she had forgotten her own discomfort. She told him about her day. You haven't even recovered yet. If you're done with them, then go home. Xavier chastised from the other end of the phone. 
Ophelia's heart warmed up. This was the first time in so many years someone cared about her, and it felt unreal. All right, she conceded. Call a cab and go home. If you don't have enough money, just let me know. Ophelia nodded. I have money. All right, then I'll get back to my work. Call me when you get home, Xavier said. Okay. A faint smile appeared on Ophelia's face. So this was what it felt like to be cared for. She'd all but forgotten this feeling since her mother died. After Xavier's call, Ophelia seemed to have recovered. She felt as though she had been injected with dopamine. The man in the car saw Ophelia hop in a taxi and leave. The car, which was parked not far away, started up as well and carefully followed behind her. Boss, she's heading home, the driver said into his phone. Follow her, Xavier said. Yes, sir, security guard affirmed. Ophelia took a taxi back to Xavier's villa. Holding the key in her hand, she was slightly excited. This could technically be considered her home in the future, right? After getting her spirits up, Ophelia cleaned the house. She nodded satisfactorily once she'd finished. Just as she was about to sit down and rest, her phone rang. Ophelia was overjoyed, thinking that it was Xavier calling back. She'd call him when he got home, but he didn't answer. He must have been busy. Ophelia's eyes flooded with disappointment. It was Jane. Jane? She answered. Oh! Jay cried. Ophelia tensed up. Jane rarely cried, so something big must have happened. Jane, why are you crying? I... Jane couldn't finish her sentence. Ophelia raised her eyebrows and asked again. What happened? Charles has been cheating on me. He wants the boss. Jane cried as she spoke. I do. Ophelia paused for a moment before asking, Where are you right now? Ophelia, too, had recently ended a terrible relationship. She was aware of the difficulties involved with being in a toxic marriage. Could Ophelia help Jane move past her troubled marriage as well? An hour after their phone call, Ophelia helped Jane into the house. Sit down. I'll go get you some water. She could still see the tears on Jane's face. Her eyes were red and swollen. She'd been crying for quite a while. Ophelia placed the cup in front of Jane. Jane, have some water first. Jane seemed to have almost lost her soul as she sat there motionlessly. Ophelia frowned. She didn't know how to comfort Jane. The only thing she could do was quietly by her friend until she was ready to talk. Jane just stared ahead silently. Ophelia's frown slowly grew. Jane was a gullible woman. She wouldn't be able to accept divorce. But Ophelia knew now that time really was the best medicine. The wounds would heal eventually. Before her divorce from Damon, she'd also cried for that loveless marriage. She finally felt as if she had really let go of everything. Her cell phone vibrated on the coffee table, and she picked it up. Mr. Woods was calling. Ophelia grabbed her phone and stood up. She went to another room to answer the call. Hey, she answered cheerily. I just finished my meeting and saw your text. Xavier's tone was light, but it gave Ophelia an inexplicable sense of security. Did I interrupt your work? Ophelia was worried about causing trouble for him. No. Xavier's answer conveyed that everything was fine. Ophelia glanced at Jane and lowered her voice, not wanting to twist the knife. Xavier noticed the change. What happened to you? Something happened with Jane's family. I want her to stay here for a few days. Is that okay? Ophelia spoke cautiously. After all, this was Xavier's home. She didn't dare make the decision on her own, so she asked for his opinion. Xavier was silent. Ophelia's heart tightened and her bright eyes widened. She was nervous about how he might answer. Ophelia held her phone tightly and waited for Xavier's reply. She bit her lip. Mrs. Woods, you can decide on your own, Xavier answered. You're my wife, and you have a say in this family. Do you understand? Ophelia felt a twitch in her heart when she heard Xavier's words. Thank you, she exclaimed. Fool. Xavier sighed helplessly, but she could hear a smile in his voice. A smile crept onto Ophelia's face as she held her phone. After Ophelia ended the call, she turned around to see Jane staring at her. What's wrong? Ophelia asked. Jane looked at her for a moment. 
Her voice was a little hoarse as she said, Do you know what you look like right now? What? She asked. You look like a young girl who's just fallen in love. Jane's words were like an arrow piercing Ophelia's heart. Her face flushed bright red. Indeed, Ophelia was falling in love. But what price was Ophelia willing to pay to be in love with Xavier? After a while, Ophelia asked Jane to stay with her. She was worried that Jane would go home and be overcome with her own mind. Ophelia cleaned up the guest room and let Jane rest. Once she was asleep, Ophelia closed the door with relief. She walked back into the living room and saw the screen on her cell phone blinking. She hurried over and picked it up. She had a few missed calls. One was from Damon. The other was from the Hoffman home. Ophelia held her phone and frowned slightly. Over the past two days, she'd forgotten something. The members of the Hoffman family didn't even know about her divorce. There must be something wrong for him to call again. Ophelia looked down at her cell phone and her eyes filled with a bit of panic. She had no idea what to do. How was she supposed to explain this to the Hoffman family? Her phone vibrated once again. Ophelia's heart skipped a beat when she saw the caller ID. Hey. She nearly shouted. What happened? Why do you sound so upset? Xavier's magnetic voice sounded. Ophelia tensed when she heard Xavier's question. This man had a knack for seeing through her thoughts. I'm fine, she answered. Xavier continued. Ophelia, my schedule's changed. I'll probably be a few days late. You can be okay alone? Ophelia's mood dropped. For a moment, she didn't know what to say. What's wrong? Xavier probed. No, nothing. Work is more important. Ophelia tried to hide her disappointment. Xavier chuckled. I can literally hear your sadness right now. Ophelia blinked, rendered speechless by this man. What? She finally barked out. Someone will send you groceries later. That way you and Miss Jane won't have to go out. Xavier had called to tell Ophelia things. She couldn't help but feel taken aback by Xavier's constant thoughtfulness. He was sending someone out to buy groceries. Ophelia didn't expect Xavier to have done that for her, which made her feel both surprised and touched. Okay, she said after a moment. Xavier smiled. Call me if you need anything. Her husband said goodbye. Ophelia looked at her phone after they ended the call and felt a little reluctant to part with it. Was she finally having some good luck? How did such a good husband appear out of nowhere? And why? Thinking about it that way, she felt more fulfilled than she had in years. In the top floor office suite of the Sequoia Corporation, Xavier put down his phone while his blue eyes fell on a document in front of him. He'd just received the investigation into Ophelia's life from the Hoffman and Hill families. Xavier frowned. This woman really made his heart eat. Boss! He heard someone calling him. When he looked up, he saw his assistant, Jason, standing at the door. Come in, he murmured. Jason walked in with an armful of papers. Boss, this is the latest information on Hoffman's. Xavier nodded and said, put it down. Jason set the documents down and said, Boss, Madam Hoffman's birthday is in a few days. I heard that the family's going to be hosting a birthday party. Xavier was quiet for a moment. Then, he waved for Jason to leave. His eyes absorbed the information. The longer he scanned the reports, the more his gaze sharpened. Why was Xavier investigating the Hoffmans? Was marrying Ophelia a part of his plan, or sheer coincidence? The next night, Ophelia and Jane had dinner together. Jane's mood seemed to have improved some, and she was a little more spirited. Oh, I want to go home tomorrow, Jane blurted out. Already? Ophelia put down the bowl in her hands. She was still worried about Jane. Jane nodded. This is my problem to handle. I need to accept it, she said. Ophelia was also half of a failed marriage, so she couldn't give Jane any advice. In the end, she could only say that she would support Jane no matter what decision she made. Just as Ophelia was falling asleep, Damon called again. After a few seconds of hesitation, Ophelia answered the call. Damon only said three simple sentences and hung up. The first was to complain that Ophelia hadn't answered his last call. 
The second sentence was to tell Ophelia that in a few days it would be her mother-in-law Helen's birthday. Damon said she should be there to help out. The third, a warning. Ophelia had better keep her mouth shut. Without a word, Ophelia got up and walked over to her window. Ophelia raised her head and looked at the night sky. She suddenly wanted her mother. Mom, what do you think I should do? She whispered. The only response she got was her own sigh. The next morning, Jane didn't even eat her breakfast before she headed home. Ophelia packed her own bag and left the house. The moment she got to work, she saw her assistant, Amy, walking towards her. Director Hill, the chairman just arrived, she greeted. My dad came to the office today? Ophelia was a little confused, but she didn't think too much about it. She put her bag down and asked, What are our plans for today? Amy took out her cell phone and told Ophelia about today's arrangements. Ophelia nodded. Okay, go back to whatever you were working on. Amy nodded and left, and Ophelia got to work. A few moments later, her office line rang. Ophelia picked up the receiver. Hello? Come to my office at once. Without waiting for Ophelia's reply, her father hung up the phone. Ophelia put the phone down and looked at the time on the table. What could have made Richard so anxious? Ophelia still wanted to finish the work she was busy with. Amy stood up from her desk outside of Ophelia's office and shouted, Director Hill! Amy's face was anxious. Ophelia got up and asked, What's wrong? Amy whispered in Ophelia's ear, I just heard that your sister's here. She's in the chairman's office. And I heard the chairman wants to let her into the company. Ophelia knew Amy was warning her. She reached out and patted Amy on the shoulder. I understand. Hold things down here while I deal with this. Amy nodded. She looked at Ophelia straight back as she walked away and couldn't help but worry for her. Everyone was clear about Ophelia's importance at Hillcrest. Half of this company wouldn't exist without her contributions. However, the chairman's real purpose was to have his other daughter take Ophelia's place. Ophelia walked into Richard's office. The moment she saw Emily, she knew. Much to Ophelia's surprise, Emily wasn't wearing some high-fashion dress today. She wore a much more formal suit. She seemed to have matured quite a bit. Emily smiled when Ophelia's gaze fell on her. Sister, you're finally here. What plans were cooking in Emily's mind? Would Ophelia be able to keep her position in the company? Ophelia could hear the betrayal in her sister's tone. Emily stood up. She was wearing her usual pair of high heels. Ophelia was a little taller than Emily to begin with, and since she wasn't wearing her heels today, Emily felt that she was a level below her big sister. She frowned, but she didn't say anything unpleasant. Ophelia, Daddy and I have been waiting for you. Ophelia looked at Richard, who was sitting at his desk. Dad, why are you looking for me? She asked. Richard raised his head when he heard Ophelia's voice. You're here. Yeah, she confirmed. Sit down. With that, Richard stood up and walked to the sofa. He relaxed on the sofa. He glanced at Ophelia, then at Emily, imploring her to sit down with them. Emily was reluctant, but she didn't dare to be rash. Richard looked at his daughters and said, Ophelia, it's like this. I'm going to let Emily come to the company to work. Ophelia's heart tightened. Her eyes glassed over. What did that mean? Was he going to break his promise? Ophelia didn't say anything, so Richard continued. From now on, this company belongs to both of you. Ophelia clenched her fists. Was he really going back on his promise to her mother? Dad, have you forgotten what you promised Mom? Ophelia asked. I didn't, Richard denied. I'm doing this for your sake. You've worked so hard for the company all by yourself. It's because I didn't want to see you work so hard that I got Emily to help you. Ophelia's grip tightened. He really wasn't going to keep his promise. As her anger surged, she suddenly recalled her wounds from just two days ago. Ophelia pressed her hand against her stomach, and her tone wasn't as gentle as usual when she spoke. Then let me ask you, Dad, what position do you plan to give Emily? Richard saw a trace of hatred in Ophelia's bright eyes. Those eyes really were just like her mother's. Richard didn't dare to look straight at her, because he recalled the look in his ex-wife's eyes before she died. 
he shifted his gaze from Ophelia to Emily. Emily also realized that the atmosphere had shifted. Father, she said. Richard coughed to hide his embarrassment. I plan on letting you show Emily around for a while. If she's competent, then let her be the vice president. This way, you will have one more helper. Ophelia frowned. She was the vice president. She had started from the bottom. But for Richard's youngest daughter, the starting point was different. Emily flew into a rage when she heard this. That wasn't what he'd said before. Why did he let this woman change his mind? And if I don't agree... Ophelia finally spoke. Richard was surprised. This was the first time that Ophelia outright refuted his opinion. He felt slightly disrespected. Ophelia, you would question me? He threatened. As Ophelia endured the pain in her stomach, she felt cold sweat dripping down her back. Dad, do you think this is the right thing to do? She asked. Have you really forgotten what you promised my mother? Ophelia glared at him. She could turn a blind eye to other problems in her life. But she would not simply give in to her father, breaking his promises to her mother. What must have Ophelia's father promised her mother? Would Ophelia let her dad break his promise? Richard looked at Ophelia as if he were looking at a young Margaret Lawrence. It could have been Ophelia or her mother sitting in front of him right now. Richard's heart trembled. Margaret died because she was too stubborn. For years, he was glad that Ophelia didn't resemble her. But he was completely wrong. She'd just been hiding it well. How can you talk to Dad like that? Emily stood up. Ophelia stared at Emily. Then what should I say? She asked. Apologize to Daddy. Hillcrest is still his company. Emily's words also gave Richard some strength. He changed his attitude. Enough. The matter is decided. I'll announce it publicly later. Dad! Ophelia looked at Richard in surprise. Could he really act so coldly towards her? Ophelia couldn't help but feel wronged, but she wouldn't let herself shed tears in front of these two. She resisted the urge to cry. Richard continued, If you don't want to train Emily, I'll do it myself. Emily was thrilled to hear that. She'd known that she would hate following Ophelia. She didn't even have to think of a way out of it. Ophelia had done it for her. It was effortless. Emily revealed a proud smile. Without a word, Ophelia turned around and walked away. What? Emily snorted and then sat beside Richard. Daddy, her attitude is a bit much. Enough! Richard shouted. He was annoyed. Emily wanted to continue the conversation. After seeing Richard's expression, she didn't dare to say anything further. Ophelia didn't remember the walk back to her office. She sat down and leaned her head back into her chair. She finally let her tears fall. This was her family. Tears streamed down Ophelia's face, and she didn't care enough to wipe them away. A short while later, the company's internal network announced Emily's appointment as vice president. At lunchtime, Ophelia locked herself in her office, but a distant knock on the door interrupted her silence. A fake, smiling face appeared in Ophelia's line of sight. Sis, I brought you lunch, Emily said. Ophelia ignored. Get out. Emily was enraged. Ophelia, do you think you are? If kick you out of the Hill family, you would be nothing. Ophelia looked at Emily without any expression. Isn't that what you and your mother were after? She asked flatly. Emily was stunned. The Ophelia of her memory had always been weak. She wouldn't even make a sound when bullied. Ophelia had been acting like a completely different person lately. She knew how to resist, and she also knew how to defend herself. Emily squinted. This wasn't good for her at all. She needed to think of a way to deal with Ophelia. Otherwise, her future would be even more difficult. Ophelia said coldly, Please leave. Ophelia, what are you getting at? Emily was furious. You deserve to spend your life alone. Emily's words were a knife to Ophelia's heart. She clenched her fists tightly and said, If you don't get out, don't blame me for forcing you out. You wouldn't dare. Emily didn't believe she would do anything so out of line. 
Ophelia glared coldly at her sister. Emily, the company has already released the news, she said. But do you think the board of directors would agree so easily? What lengths would Ophelia go to to keep Emily out of the company? Was the reason for this newfound attitude in Ophelia her new husband, Xavier? Emily took an unsteady step back. She hadn't forgotten. The board of directors had chosen Ophelia once already. Many of those elders had been Margaret's friends in the past. If they were to hold a board vote, Richard might not be able to stand against it. Emily looked at Ophelia with resentment. She didn't want to suffer such a loss. Ophelia, don't be stupid, Emily said. Soon you'll be done at Hillcrest. Then let's wait until that day. And then you can come back to steal my job, Ophelia shot back. Emily glared at Ophelia. I can wait. After Emily left, Ophelia fell powerlessly into her chair. This was the first time she had openly fought with Emily to the point of such rage. Was growing up with siblings was like? Ophelia closed her eyes as her heartbeat quickened. It took her a long time to calm down. She knew she had to keep her mother's legacy alive. When she opened her eyes again, Ophelia's gaze fell on her phone. A face popped into her mind, and Ophelia hesitated to make the call. But why was it so hard to make? Ophelia pressed the number and put the phone to her ear. Just as she was about to hang up, he picked up. Hello? The man answered. It's me, Ophelia, she said timidly, afraid of disturbing his work. Xavier's extremely attractive and magnetic voice sounded, so it wasn't hard to hear the joy in his tone. Are you resting? No, Ophelia replied, not knowing what to say next. Xavier seemed to be waiting for Ophelia to say more. He quieted down, and the only sound present was the two people's breathing. They stayed on the phone, but no one spoke. Ophelia felt calmer after just hearing his voice. Ophelia, what happened? Xavier got tired of waiting, so he spoke first. Ophelia felt crazy. Why would she suddenly want to call Xavier? Moreover, she didn't know what to say. Ophelia shook her head. It's fine. I'm hanging up, she said. Ophelia hung up the phone. She lowered her head and sighed. She felt strange for thinking of Xavier when she felt upset. Actually, she wanted to see him even more. She wanted him to comfort her with his words. Ruth arrived at Ophelia's office shortly after lunch. Why are you here, Ophelia? Ruth sat down. Dad knows you're blaming him for not keeping his promise with your mom. Ophelia didn't answer. She was already hurting enough from the betrayal, so she had no desire to talk about it even more. Ophelia, Richard has never forgotten your mother, she added. Ophelia felt that her father was a bit of a hypocrite. He brought Ruth back to the Hill family before her mother's body was even cold. Back then, Ophelia was too young to stand up for herself and her mother's legacy. She certainly wouldn't let it be disrespected again. She would keep what her mother had left for her. Ruth sighed. Your father is doing this for you. I saw Damon's father the other day and he told me you shouldn't be at work so much. You and Damon have been married for two years. It's time to take care of yourself and have a baby. Do you understand? Ophelia couldn't help but sneer. This really was the perfect excuse. As Ophelia is betrayed by her own family time and time again, would Xavier help Ophelia get back what is rightfully hers? I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.